Welcome back to Coaching Ingles and in today's video I've got another topic for you guys just to kind of help you uh, understand this emotion uh, probably why it happens and maybe even how to control it or even um, just focus on you know using other emotions to help dumb this one down and that emotion is aggression now as a basketball player um, it is important to have aggression and I'm not saying that it shouldn't be used on the court you know, I'm, you know, everyone was tough. I mean, obviously, you look at great players like, let's say, uh, LeBron James, Kobe Bryant. Uh, you know, uh, of course, you have guys like Kevin Durant, James Harden, Steph Curry, uh, or Russell Westbrook, especially the Marcus Cousins. You know, you have especially Russell Westbrook and the Marcus Cousins. But you have many players in the league who are very aggressive and straight to the point. And um, you just have to realize that. You know, aggression can be good and a bad emotion. Definitely be, definitely can be a good or bad thing. And I think that is important to kind of just um, help help you understand that, uh, you know, what kind of, what kind of bad, what can help you balance it out, I think, honestly. So, in terms of the court, in terms of the basketball court, what can get you easily aroused? Can it be teammates, your coach even, rival matchups? I think, honestly, um, it can be a mixture of these things. I'm not forgetting to include the refs as well. Definitely. All these things are factors. Fans as well. <laughs> List goes on a lot of things. Really. It could even be things from home as well. But I think I think I've seen for about for years of watching basketball, playing basketball, I think it's mainly rival matchups and uh, sometimes the ref. And it sometimes can be a teammates, especially if they make um, silly decisions, which happens. I mean, these decisions are, you don't know why it happens, but it just does happen. But yeah, I mean, um, when I look at players such as Russell Westbrook and DeMarcus Cousin, I see two different people using aggression uh, differently. I see one person is using it, not so much the right way, but in more in a, a composed manner on the court. Whereas another person is just kind of lashing out crazy, all the, not all the time, but majority of the time, that's what he does. And the control and composure of the aggression is Russell Westbrook and DeMarcus Cousins. So with aggression, why does it affect you, your mental and your body? I think it's because it's one of those emotions, it really makes you aroused and annoyed and really peeved that, you know, you're going to feel hot, completely warm, blood hot, red, that it's just going to make you, it's just going to make you that. And of course, it even affects like your um, your mental because it just kind of clouds your decisions on what's going on. Because like I said, if the Marcus Cousins, if he gets angry, he's gonna go out the refs or, or the rival rival matchups, and everybody's there trying to calm him down. No one, no one can really calm him down. He's gonna get thrown out of the game or try and get into a fight. And it's kind of ridiculous like how that happens. And I'm not saying to, I'm not here to say that it's just his fault. He does. Um, I feel like some people do purposely pick his buttons but that's the thing about it look at Russell Westbrook he's a lot more controlled and composed and yeah there are players who do pick his buttons but he knows when to use his aggression but then he kind of controls it and says basketball the game is more important don't worry about the whole altercation or maybe certain team is doing something just know what you're doing with the team and whatnot is fine and I think that's what makes uh and both of them, it may, honestly, I think it makes both of them great players. It makes them stand out. No matter whether it's good or bad to a lot of people, it makes them stand out. So, even if an aggressive situation does happen, there are ways to avoid it, you know? And definitely, I think this is where, like, um, a lot of it to do. Like, some people even have breathing techniques, um, a spongy, I think, <laughs> what's it called? A spongy squeeze, a spongy ball. Like, literally, they grab it in their hands and just do that. And, you know, there's so many different ways. So, yeah those two are ways there's a lot of other ways and I think even um you know when I look at Westbrook for example I look at him and I feel like the reason why I think what keeps him so or aggressive but composed about it is because he knows the ball game is on the line he knows the the game is on the line and if they lose if he lashes out it's not going to help wait until the end of the game to actually talk to your teammates and explain what is going on because again like, like I said your teammates your your rival matchups, but even your coach and your coaching teammates importantly they can really they can sometimes get under your skin because sometimes your coach may not have the best ideas and that's fine you know we're not all we are not we all don't know what to do sometimes 
you know what I'm saying? Same with like your teammates, but it's just about guidance, and I think that's where the whole point of teamwork comes into it. You know, um, that there isn't the best way to come up with like an, and with a, with methods to stop your anger uh, occurring. I mean, there is ways to control it, but there isn't the best way. There's so many different types of ways, and I think that um, you know, of course, like I said again, breathing technique, spongy ball. Meditation, some people do that, those three things to kind of calm themselves before the game. And I think I've seen a lot of players stay calm, you know, definitely. Uh, if, let's take a look at someone who's calm most of the time. It's probably someone like uh, like uh, uh, Clay Thompson, for example. I barely see him uh, lash out on his teammates, uh, certain guys on rival teams, and maybe the, co maybe the coach or the refs. I don't really see it a lot. Um, it's just it's just one of those things. I think it's just aggression is like it doesn't really affect certain people. They may feel angry on the inside, but they're not showing it through their body language. And I think that is important to kind of like connect yourself and make sure that you know that your emotions are in tune. I think the best advice I can give you guys honestly about aggression is that you know is get, I just try and express yourself. It's just, just trying to express yourself honestly. Do not, um, you know, let these, I think the best thing, I think I've always heard people say, oh, no, you need to calm down. And sometimes they're not always the case. And that's not always the case. You need to show your emotions, but also it does need to be controlled, but and that you're frustrated. And also that, you know, you, you need to let people know this as well. But again, control is, a, is an important factor when it comes to aggression. Some people can control it, some people can't. So I think it's important for the people that can't to say, you see, if you have someone who can control it, just talk to them and say, look, there's a bigger picture here, try and stay focused, or whatever the case may be. Again, with teammates and coaches, it's understandable, you know, sometimes your coaches might not pick up the best play, sometimes your teammates might make me the, make me the silliest of passes or silliest of shots or whatever. Um, with refs, it's up and down because, again, you don't want to get thrown out, you know, no one wants to get thrown out. Um, obviously, with your rival matchups, is that well, you're playing against this team that you can't really stop and say, like, oh, you know, calm down. Or, they're not going to tell you that. They're going to do anything to get in your gears. So I think, honestly, it's just the best way is that, like I said, the breathing techniques, control, and just consistency on working on yourself mentally and even physically if it does drain you, you know? But yeah, guys, I think that's going to be pretty much it for the video. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one. Peace.